Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We've got an exciting video for you today. A brand new product from Alpha Inverters. This just hit Amazon within the last few days, so I went ahead and picked this up. Brand new offering from Alpha. You know I love the little 12 volt models that Alpha makes. I run them every single day. I've got two of them. This one right here is putting in the work today, but this one, the new one is different. Check this out. 24 volt Alpha at 3000 watts. So I'm gonna run it through its paces and see if it's as good as my 12 volt units. Impressive specifications on this sheet, considering the value price of this inverter. So I'll have a slide right here. So pause it if you want to look at the specs closer. All right, so before I pull the 12 volt inverter down, just for reference, remember alphas have very low idle consumption. So we'll make a note of what the 12 volt unit pulls. So we'll pull the 12 volt unit off the wall. And for today's setup, I got the white, oh, brand new Wise batteries. I didn't realize the color match. Check that out color match batteries to inverter hey that's pretty cool so i got these parallel together i'm going to change them back up to series i'm going to use the same breaker and shunt for this test today when i pull the 12 volt off eventually the 24 volt alpha is going to go on this wall with its own shunt dedicated side for testing 24 volt batteries so i'll have 12 and 24 volt testing capabilities on my workbench So here's the 12 volt alpha pulled off the wall. There's the new 24 volt model. You can see the same width and everything, same terminal designs on the back. The 24 volt one's just a few inches longer. And then again, side by side from the front view, same layout as the 12 volt, switches and everything in the same position, same displays. So, you know, very similar, just larger, of course, cause it's 24 volt. And then one more comparison. This is the rear of the inverter. So same terminal design, same cooling fan design. Uh, the screw mounting holes are the same width apart on both models. Just, you know, the 24 volt one is larger. So now I will take the cover off the 24 volt one to see if it's got the same quality build as I've come to expect out of the Alpha brand. So I'll compare. So here are both the inverters side by side. I've got the screws taken out so I can look at the boards and things. So of course we're comparing apples to oranges cause we've got 12 volt and 24 volt. I want to say they use the same control circuitry, you know, fits the control circuitry in this one as they did the 24s. They're using the same printed circuit board, the same thick boards that you know, I'm used to seeing in the alpha. So here's the cover off the 24 right here. Get that out of the way for you. And then the 12 volt right here. So there we go. Let's compare them. Let me get you a closer look. So this is the 24 volt unit. Uh, everything's configured to accept 24 volts on this one, but you see very similar you have the same style board, the same red printed circuit board that they use on the 12 volt model, the same fits control circuitry. So no adjusting the voltage up to 120 volts, but I've spoke of the reasoning behind the 110 volt in other videos. So you can check some of that out for a better explanation. Uh, we got an additional cooling fan on the heat sink on the 24 volt model. We have a single fan right here, but it's got a little additional ducted exit for the fan to direct the airflow better where this one just kind of blows however it wants to the 24 volt this directs the airflow closer on this heat sink so that should help it run cooler uh same similar wire layout same similar terminal layout um you know very similar just upsize for 24 volts so uh enough looking at it it's time to hook it up and see what it'll do so i got the 3000 watt 24 volt alpha mounted up I haven't turned anything on yet because I've got the WISE batteries wired in 12 volt parallel where I've been cycling them and running them, doing some tests with these. So I will take the parallel connections apart. I'll series wire it to 24 volt. All right, series wired the WISE batteries to 24 volts. And uh, you can buy pre-charge resistors, but uh, these auto test lights will take 24 volts. Don't go above 24. Hold it till the light goes out. Pre-charge those capacitors in the alpha. All right, the lights out, then hit the breaker. All right, so I got my little energy meter reconfigured for 24 volts. So I'll go ahead and turn the alpha on now, see how it does on startup. All right, we'll get a quick fan test showing 27 volts, 26.96. So very close on the display, 111 volts right there. So let's check the wave, check the output voltage, then I'll start loading it down. Take a quick peek at the sine wave on the alpha inverter. Of course, unloaded right now. So there we are right there. Change the scale for you. Uh, pretty stable. So that's what I've come to expect out of alpha. And a quick check of the idle draw. This is very important for your battery bank overnight and things. 
low idle draw is a plus and this high frequency inverter 5.9 watts of idle draw on a 24 volt inverter uh, just a smidge more than the 12 volt units considering it's powering all the extra electronics that is very low if not the lowest idle consumption of any 24 volt inverter nice so it's time to put a load to it see what these wises can handle so what this alpha can handle and my hand is a cord going to a zendor portable power station fast charging uh probably 1800 watts or so so plug it in and let it eat here we go all right so we've settled in around 17 amps on the ac side and that is almost 1800 watts coming out of the wise batteries to the alpha inverter so yeah 70 amp load on the 24 volt inverter oh the watt hours energy is ticking up fast that Zendor is hungry. It's actually in UPS mode. So the lights in here are actually being powered by this because it's passing through from this Alpha through the Zendor, powering all these lights. So no flickering, no nonsense. And let's get a quick sine wave check. Looks good. I'll give you a quick shot of the Zendor to show that we are in UPS mode from the Alpha. And you can see all the LED lights in here. There's no flickering, none of that nonsense like some of your your lower end inverters do, the Alpha's got good clean power. Putting right at 1600 watts into the Zendor, pulling 20 out for all the lights, but UPS mode, no flickering lights, I like it. No cooling fans yet, still staying nice and cool, so that's all it takes to get it warmed up to bring the fans on. Uh, clicking away power pretty quick. So while the batteries are still, still fresh before I bring them down too much, charging that Zendor up, we're pulling 1,641 watts out of the Alpha right now, so bump it up some. Leave it running for a few minutes, see how she does. That's got the cooling fans running. That thing is ripping some heat out. I think that's enough. That's only rated for 100 amps. And we've been pulling continuously 126, 127 amps for over five minutes. I'm gonna call that good. I don't wanna mess up my little shunt. So I'm gonna cancel it now. Wow. All right. Over five minutes at roughly 10% over its rating. Uh, only reason I stopped is not the inverter. It is extracting heat. It is doing exactly what it's supposed to do. Uh, this little shunt right here, is only ready for 100 amps and it's only four gauge wire and i don't want to drain these batteries all the way down because i got you some tests coming up on this so let me get everything cooled off and quiet talk about what i just saw so during this test i was pushing everything past its limits the shunt the breaker was about to go it was getting nice and toasty the wire was getting toasty this setup's more for battery capacity testing more than as extreme testing um, the voltage regulation on the alpha you know did great even past its rating you know, we held good voltage, good sine wave, and I had it going through a power station that's powering these lights. So the energy or the power coming out of this inverter was passing straight through the lights. And you saw no flickering. The sine wave stayed clean. Uh, you know, even not giving it what it wanted. You know, we could the wires need to be a lot bigger than this for what this can can eat or consume. So it was getting short a little bit on its DC side and still, you know, doing what it's supposed to do. And the cooling fans, they would come on for 45 seconds or so, shut off for about 45 seconds and come back on. So that's telling me that even at maximum or past maximum rating, the fans are oversized. That means it can cool this unit down quick. And that's what you want for long life on your electronics. You want them nice and cool. So these fans were just ripping that heat out, uh, doing exactly what they were supposed to do. So initial testing, yes, the 3000 watt alpha is an absolute tank, just like this smaller brethren.
I know somebody's going to grab about not throwing a big, huge surge load on it, but I don't have big surge load items being off grid. You learn to get rid of stuff with big, huge inductive loads and inrush currents and things like that. Everything I got soft start, even my tools are all cordless battery power stuff. So I'm trying to think ideas to surge test this unit, but uh, I'm coming up with blanks. So if you got some ideas for, you know, surge related items put it in the comment section and you may be wondering how much is this new 3000 watt alpha well this one came from amazon 296 dollars uh so not a bad price it's roughly a hundred dollars more than the smaller 12 volt i mean i beat the snot out of these so i'm gonna start beating the snot out of this one uh you know first initial testing i'm happy with it so if you paired this 3000 watt alpha which is budget friendly and it's capable with some, you know, high quality budget friendly batteries and some, you know, high quality budget friendly charge controllers I've been showing, you can have a nice potent off grid system for, you know, a very low cost of entry. This will run your refrigerator plus some, this will run some wind units, this will pretty much do a uh, majority of simple off grid tasks that you need it to handle. That is a good bit of, of power capabilities right there. Uh, of course, we need bigger wires, you know, different few things around. I can show you all that if you're interested. But so far, yes, I am very happy with this new Alpha. Uh, so I have links in the description to this Alpha inverter. Uh, I'm going to give you a full test on these coming up. But very happy. So I'm going to pull the 24 back off right here, reconfigure my batteries, put the 24 volt over here for future testing, and I'm going to run it and run it and run it some more. So I hope you all enjoyed today's video. Y'all take care. Be safe. I'll see you on the next one.